to my channel. For today's video, I thought we'd do something a little different, and that is a ranking video. I did a few months ago go on a eyeshadow palette no buy, but did manage to break that within the first month, and I did purchase a collection of five different eyeshadow palettes. So I thought I would go through and rank those five different eyeshadow palettes, as they are the palettes that did break my no buy. I thought it might be a fun video idea, and like I say, something slightly different for me. I wasn't intending to film this video today, but because I was filming something else and went to the effort of putting false eyelashes on, I wanted to make the most of filming as many videos with them as I could. Normally between videos, I do like to change up my lipstick and my eyeshadow, but because of the false eyelashes, I was quite limited with what I could do with my eyeshadow. So I appreciate that this may look like a bit of a hot mess at this point and not exactly cohesive and things, but we're just going to go with it because again false eyelashes kind of a miracle i did say in an earlier video these are the magnetic lashes from kiss and so far i've been pretty impressed it did take me a little getting used to so i think i was blinking excessively in the first video i think i'm okay now and they are pretty comfortable don't get me wrong i can still feel like i'm wearing false eyelashes but they are definitely more comfortable than ones i've worn in the past so i'm really excited to use these again but why don't we get started and I will go over the five eyeshadow palettes that broke my eyeshadow palette no buy. Starting with number five, we have this one from Juvia's Place. This is the Topes palette. This is one of their newer six pan mini palettes that they have brought out. They did bring some out a while ago, which I believe were the berries, the nudes and the chocolates. And then this was the second round where they brought out the, the Topes, the pinks and can't remember the other one there was the violets but now actually the violets may have been the first batch either way they've got about six or seven of these mini eyeshadow palettes out now these ones retail for 14 dollars each but at the time i purchased i used angelica nyquist's 10 percent off code so i did get it for slightly less although i think i did pay customs for this so i probably ended up paying more than that anyway i was slightly disappointed with this palette I have tried quite a few Juvia's Pace palettes now and I have always been really impressed with their formula but for this one I felt like it felt pretty flat and because of comparing it with another one I'm going to talk about it didn't perform as well as that one did. At the point I purchased this I didn't have many cool tone palettes in my collection so I was excited to add something like this but I don't feel like I've added an awful lot. I feel like these two shades here don't have too much of a difference to them when applied to the eyes. Obviously this one does run slightly darker but there's not too much in it that I notice a vast amount of difference. This shade here is the one that I apply in my outer corner and this is a gorgeous shade and it is a nice kind of deep cool shade if that makes sense. I find that I do have to work quite hard with the shimmers in this palette and build them up quite a bit. So I feel like compared to previous Juvia's Place palettes I've tried, this one just is a little bit lacklustre. Don't get me wrong, it's not a bad palette. I've definitely tried much worse eyeshadow palettes, but for me, it just wasn't a favourite and I did kind of have high hopes for this one. Just in case you haven't seen recent haul videos, there are actually three Juvia's Place palettes in this ranking video. And another one comes next. This is the Masquerade Mini by Juvia's Place. This is a gorgeous kind of split palette. We have all the brights on the top two rows and then we have the more neutrals on the bottom. This is the palette that I do have on the majority of my eyes today. I do have one shade from one of the other palettes in here, but predominantly it is this palette that I do have on my eyes. I have, I think it's these three shades here. This shade here is quite a unique shade in that it does kind of perform like a matte, but it has the sort of shimmer to it. So I think it's what kind of is getting called the sequin formula but it is really nice, I can easily see the shimmer. I did get this palette together with another one in this ranking as a deal. It was two of them for $25 and I believe they are normally $25 each. Again, I did use a 10% discount code, but I also did again get stung with custom, so I've probably not got too much of a discount, but I have been wanting to try these two palettes for some time. This is one that I know I won't get the most amount of use out of because of these bright shades but it is a nice one to have in my collection because it is something different. These shades are slightly more unique to my collection. It is probably the bottom two rows I am predominantly going to reach for, but these bottom two rows do definitely kind of scream awesome to me. They are some gorgeous, warm, rich, browny, orangey toned shades and are really lovely to work with. 
The reason why this palette is ranked at number four is because I know I won't reach for it as much because of it having the brighter shades. But formula wise, it is still a great palette and I do love generally the Juvia's Place formula. But yeah, I thought I would rank this one at number four just because of how much use I know I would get out of it. And in at number three is the final Juvia's Place palette in this countdown. And this one is the Magic Mini. And this is the one that I did get in the deal with the Masquerade palette. The reason why I've ranked this one higher than that one is I feel like this one is even more unique to my collection. This to me is kind of a sort of earth meets sea kind of palette. You've got your nice sort of neutrally earthy tones at the top with then your bright kind of oceanic shades at the bottom. These two shades here in particular are really stunning. I did have these on my lid in a recent video and they did end up looking kind of more glam than I had intended at the time because they do have a sort of silver undertone to them. This shade here, Yara down the bottom, is a gorgeous and it does have kind of like a gold undertone to it as well so when you shift your head you do see the sort of gold specks coming through and say it is a gorgeous shade. These two shades here, Yay Day I think it is and Aoife, are quite similar shades. This they are both very dark blue shades. This one is more of kind of a cool tone navy, whereas this one is a really, really deep navy with kind of like a purpley undertone to it. The shade here, which I think is Arja, it's like a petrol blue colour. But, but like I say, this one is definitely more unique to my collection, especially these sort of two bottom rows here. So I am really glad I did pick up these duo of palettes because I think they are a great addition to my collection. Formula wise, they both do perform as good as each other, but, but for me, it was the colour range and sort of story in this palette that made me rank this one slightly higher, and because this one does bring more to my collection because of the unique shades in it. In at number two, we have this bite sized palette from e.l.f. This is the Jalapeno palette. I did pick this one up on a whim, and technically, this is the palette that did initially break the no buy. I had found myself kind of reaching more towards greeny shades in palettes and go for that slightly more brighter look which for me I am normally all about the neutrals but I just kind of felt myself being drawn into more greens. I do have I think three or four of these bite size palettes in total now but all the other ones I do have are neutral and there was quite a few palettes coming out at around the same time these did which did have those kind of green shades to them one of which being the Natasha Denona Mini Gold Palette, which has not long been released in the UK. So I was looking at that palette, but then when I kind of looked at it side by side with this one, I felt like I could achieve a similar look, albeit this one was slightly brighter. I thought for the sake of £3, this one was worth a go to have a little sort of dabble with the greens and see how I could work with them. And then I could possibly in the future purchase the Natasha Denona Gold Palette. But after using this palette, I don't feel like I need that one in my collection now because this does everything for me. Yes, okay, it does only have four shades in it and there's not going to be a great variation of looks I can achieve with this. But for someone who is just kind of dabbling more into green eyeshadow, this is perfect because there is only four shades, so you kind of can't go wrong. I tend to go in the crease with this one, outer corner with this one, middle and towards the outer lid with this one and then in a corner to the first half with this gold shade and every look I've achieved with this again okay they're not vastly different but I've loved every look I've achieved with this there have been times where I've just used three green shades sometimes I've just gone in with the gold over the dark green and I say every look I achieve with this I absolutely love and I never thought I would say that I want to create more green looks I did have to kind of stop myself from using this palette because I found that I was reaching for it more and more and most of the time I'm wearing eyeshadow these days is to film videos so it would have been the case that my eyes were constantly some variation of green but I do absolutely love this palette and for me out of the bite size palettes that I have this one appears to perform the best pigment level wise and kind of blendability so I do highly recommend this if you are looking to give green eyeshadow a try for the sake of three pound it is definitely worth a go and I love this one so much more than I thought I would. And then in at number one, which should be no surprise considering I am a neutral lover, is the Natasha Denona Glam Palette. At the point I purchased this, I had already purchased the Juvia's Place Topes Palette and I had purchased this because it was a cool tone palette and it, like I said earlier, I didn't have many in my collection. I kind of wish I had just purchased this one now and not the Topes one, but I am so glad I have this one in my collection. It is my first full-size Natasha Denona palette. So these palettes are quite pricey. They do retail for £60. 
I do think it is worth £60, although I personally didn't pay that because I had a discount code for 10% off and then I did have a £5 voucher I could put towards it and also some top cash back and things like that. So cash wise, I did only spend 30 something pounds on this, but I say I do think it is worth 60 the quality on these eyeshadows is outstanding. I haven't had an issue with a single shadow in here. The matte in here blends beautifully. There are so many different options for crease shades and outer corner shades. Yes, okay, they are all similar shades of cool tone brown, but I do find that this palette is very versatile. There are so many different shimmers in here that I do always struggle to try and decide which one I want to use. Because I am going to be working from home for the kind of foreseeable future at this point, I know this palette won't get as much love as it deserves but when I go back to being at the office and I do go back to kind of wearing eyeshadow on a daily basis I know this palette is going to be an absolute staple and to be honest it is a palette that for an everyday basis if I only had this one to reach for I would be set for life because for me there are so many different combinations I can achieve from this palette and like I say I am so glad I purchased it and it is rightly being ranked at number one. The only issue that I have with this palette is I'm not a massive fan of the shade names. You get where they're coming from, they kind of are great for a beginner, but for me I do prefer shades to have their own name and not just what they do. But I say I do kind of get it, I just hope that when the next palette comes out she steers back away from that because I do like shades having their own names. But it is a really nice idea and because this is going to be an everyday staple palette for a lot of people, that knit shading thing is probably going to be really useful but just for my personal preference I'm not a huge fan but other than that I can't fault this palette it has a really good size mirror which is nice and clear as well I also like that you can pop each of the shades out of here and move them around in the palette if you don't quite like the setup of it but I suppose in that respect the shade names being the way they are is better because as long as you move a crease shade to another crease shade spot you've kind of not messed up the naming system of it so Maybe there is kind of method to a madness, but yeah, outstanding palette and I'm so glad I picked this one up. And it definitely is my number one out of the five palettes that broke my eyeshadow palette no buy. So that is all my five palettes ranked. Like I say, I thought this would be something slightly different and it was quite fun to sit down and rank them. I do absolutely love watching ranking videos and for me, if it's more than five products, I would definitely struggle. So that's why I thought I would do this now because it was kind of the perfect number where it wasn't too difficult for me to rank them. But I do usually come back at the end of the year and do a full ranking video of all the eyeshadow palettes that I've tried throughout the course of the previous year. This year it's definitely going to be a lot of palettes so that one's going to be quite fun to do. But other than that, that is it for today's video. If you did enjoy it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not already. Thanks. Thanks.